Hi everybody and welcome. In today's video I want to give you a few tips and tricks about how to get a job in AI music or AI audio. Let's assume you are just out of school or you're still a student and you want to get a job. So how can you do that? Obviously the best chance you have is if you already have some uh, work experience in the space. That's going to be very very valuable to get you a new job. And the second best thing is to have an internship in the space. But if you don't have uh, either of these, so you have another option, which is basically building a portfolio of projects in AI music or AI audio. In this video, I want to suggest you how to build an effective portfolio for AI music or more generally AI audio. Some of the advice that I'll give is obviously transferable to other fields of application of machine learning, but Given you're following this channel, most likely you are interested in audio and music applications for artificial intelligence. So that's what I'm going to cover the most. The first thing that I want to say here is that I suggest you to create a portfolio that's highly specialized. So for example, build a portfolio that's only focused on AI audio or AI music, even more specifically if you're interested in that specific aspect. So why? this should be the case. Well, first of all, you want to avoid the stuff that everyone builds. So are you familiar with predicting house prices or uh, classifying numbers from the MNIST dataset? Well, you want to avoid that. Then the other idea is that you want to show your potential employer that you are highly qualified with that for that specific field. And so for that reason, I suggest you like to focus on one field of application. In our case, it's going to be AI audio. Why should you bother building a portfolio? There are a number of reasons for that. So first of all, portfolio will help you uh, get a job and it's a kind of like a business card that you give to your potential and future uh, employers so that they can understand your skills and see what you can and cannot do. At the same time, this is a great opportunity for developing your skill set. So you can use these projects just to investigate and explore new and exciting um, techniques and applications. And finally, and I think most importantly, if you work on some interesting projects in your portfolio, you're going to have a glimpse into real world problems that you'll have when you deal with AI audio applications. What should your portfolio look like? Well, there are different philosophies here, but my take is that you should focus on mid-sized projects. By mid-sized projects, I mean uh, projects that you can build in two, three months with some kind of part-time effort. For the whole portfolio, you want to build three, four different projects. Now, why should you focus on uh, this mid-sized projects? Well, there are a bunch of reasons here. So first of all, so these are not too long. So, I mean, they are manageable, but at the same time, they are not toy problems. The problem with toy problems is that you, get, you don't get exposed to many of the complexities that you have when you start working on bigger projects. And with the mid-sized projects, you, you get like a nice mix. So it's quite fast to go through it, but at the same time, you start getting like problems that you would probably get in real world uh, situations, like how to uh, clean a data set or how to deploy a system or how to optimize certain machine learning uh, algorithms. At the same time, if you focus on mid-sized projects, you have certain projects that show your skill set to the uh, future or potential employer. So yeah, focus on mid-sized projects. The next question I'm sure you'll have is what topics should I focus on? Well, this is completely up to you. So first of all, you should focus on things that you are really passionate about. So if you love generative music, by all means, focus on that. If you love more anal uh, analyzing music or yeah, just focus on music information retrieval stuff. But uh, the what I would suggest you is for the different um, projects to take like complementary topics. So you may have one project that focuses on generative music, for example, generating piano lines, piano music. 
and another project may focus on something completely different. For example, genre, music genre recognition and music emotion recognition. And a third project may focus on some kind of like simple voice command recognition. The topic itself isn't overly important. What's important is that you uh, pick different architectures and play around with different algorithms. Obviously, you want to mainly remain in the deep learning space. And for that, you want to have a project that probably uh, explores convolutional architectures. So if this could be some kind of audio classification problem. Then you want a project that perhaps covers generative models like a generative adversarial networks so or variational autoencoders. And this could be a generative music system, for example. And then you may want to also cover other types of um, architectures like uh, transformer architectures or recurrent neural networks. And these will give you uh, a, a broad a spectrum of uh, applications that you can work on and at the same time showcase your uh, skill sets. A final piece of advice regarding topic is that you should focus on topics where you can find non-toy datasets, so real-world datasets. Why should you do that? Well, because this way you are going to get uh, used to working with real-world uh, datasets, which are usually way messier <laughs> than a toy dataset, and they will give you uh, problems and issues that you don't find in toy datasets. The most important aspect of the projects in your AI audio portfolio is that they should be almost production ready. This way you can go through all the steps that you need to develop an AI audio system from ideation to model development to optimization, training and deployment. If you want an example of how to do that, I suggest you check out my series called AI audio application. The link should be over here. Just check that out and it will give you an example of how to develop a keyword spotting uh, system from scratch and until deployment on AIWS as a Flask API. You may be wondering, but why is it important to have production ready systems in your AI audio portfolio? Let me tell you a story. When I was a CEO of Melodrive, I would hire AI music engineers. One thing that I would look into these people's skill set is their ability to deliver a system from scratch all the way to uh, deployment. And why is that? Well, because we didn't have many resources and so we needed for people to take full ownership on certain projects. And this meant everything from scratch, model development, all the way to uh, deployment. This isn't only true for Melodrive, but it applies to any AI audio or AI music startup that I know. And that's because resources are limited and the more hats you can wear as an AI audio engineer and the better it is. Another reason why it's important for your projects to be almost production ready is that this will give you a glimpse into all the different steps that you need to develop this AI audio systems. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to be a master at all of these steps individually, but rather what you want to have is an overall understanding of all the different steps involved into the process. And this is an invaluable uh, skill set that it's going to make your life easier when you want to get a job. So here you have some advice regarding how to put together your AI audio portfolio. I hope I convinced you that you want to go with something that's highly specialized and to work on some kind of like mid-sized projects and take like the topics that you like the most in the space and at the same time try to build something that's almost a production uh, ready. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If that's the case, please remember to leave a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time. Cheers.